For the past six months, I've been working out of a shed in my parents' backyard that I converted into an office. Unconventional? Yes. Practical? Absolutely. And today I'm going to be showing you around the shed, how much it costs, and how you can start doing the same thing if you want. This 130 square foot shed has everything I need to produce the content I make for every platform. It is the perfect mini creative studio. And I'm excited to finally show you around and let you know how much it might cost you to do the same thing. The reason for this project was pretty simple. While I was in college, I knew I only had two options after graduation, moving out, or living at home. And at the time, both options were viable because I already had a job lined up for me after college, so I knew that I would be able to afford to live away from home if I wanted to. But the three largest spending categories for the average person are housing, transportation, and food. Housing taking up one third of the average person's salary. In college, I would make videos about financial freedom and living below your means. And because of this mindset I had trained myself to follow, I knew I would need to be smart about my spending decisions after college. And since I'm still young, no one would look at me weird for still living at home. My living space was never one that would allow me to be as creative as I wanted to be. So I considered renting office spaces, I tried to do work out of my room, none of it worked, and none of it made as much sense as making a studio out of the shed that we used for the last 16 years to store stuff in our backyard. So on a hot summer day, I started taking things out one by one with the eventual goal of tossing it all away in a dumpster. This process was physically and mentally exhausting. There were many times when I doubted if I would would really be able to pull it off. But after some time, we did finish cleaning out the shed, and after doing some electrical work and hiring a handyman to do everything else for me while I was working my engineering job at the time, the work was finally done. Okay guys, so here we are in the shed. Bring you around and show you some of the stuff that I like the most in this area. So everything actually is connected to a breaker. If I need to, the breaker can trip if there's too much energy coming into here. It was a lot better to do this than to have like an extension cord running out from my house. This is much safer and it's more long-term, so. Right here I have a Google Home. This thing works like half the time, but it controls all of the lights in here. So if I say, hey Google, turn the lights off, tell me some like error thing. Like I couldn't reach CY and C. To control your lights, say something like, Turn on Bro, reading what? light. The TV behind me is a 50 inch smart TV. I barely use it to be honest with you. The most time I'm in here, I'm actually doing work. For the most part, it's kind of just here as decoration, if anything. This couch is really nice. It's also a pullout couch, so I can use it when I need to sleep in here. I've only had to do that a few times. It's a nice piece that I added in. Made sure it was great. I matched everything else around here, and it's pretty nice. There it is, the couch. Up here is some storage space. I told my parents I would let them keep some stuff up here because this used to, like I said, this used to be their storage space. Instead of taking them out completely, I let them keep this little part of the shed. I store some of my camera stuff in here too, but for the most part, it's just their stuff. Worked out pretty well. This is my my main desk setup. This is like my baby. This is what I'm using most of the time that I'm in here. I have three monitors here. This is a MacBook Pro 2021, so it's got the Pro. It's a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. It's a beast. I have an LG ultra wide monitor right here that I use to edit like all of my videos as well. And then I have a vertical monitor because on Instagram, a lot of the content I'd be making was vertical. To see what it would look like vertically, I put a vertical monitor here. It's pretty practical in general. It's nice to see things like the way you would see it on a phone even if it's just like me on google or me doing something else the desk that i have here was actually given to me by my last company so shout out thank you for the desk i'm not gonna shout them out i have a blue microphone here when i'm recording any sort of audio for videos or if i'm on a zoom call or anything like that and i have it connected to this that arm that you can snap onto the desk it's just if i ever if i don't want it in the way i just leave it there and if i want i just pull it down along with that too i have this little light that turns on, it's like nice in the nighttime specifically. I also added three shelves that kind of store some stuff, nothing crazy. I write down a lot of my goals on an actual physical board so I can keep seeing it. I decided to be pretty good to keep it right here, right next to my setup. Let me get down to your level. In order to heat this entire place, I have two of these space heaters that are connected to the Google Homes so I can control the heat from anywhere in the world because this is actually connected to the Wi-Fi. And unlike the lights, this thing works every single time. It's, it's kind of sketchy because space heaters are notorious for like blowing up and like causing fires. So I am a little on edge. That's why I included a fire extinguisher in the corner just in case something goes wrong. But I do check the filter in the back periodically to make sure there's no buildup of anything that could catch on fire. I'm not like too worried about it blowing up. These two are what heat this place. It's connected to a thermostat that I have right over there. And this place stays very warm. Like the lowest it's been has been maybe like 15 degrees outside and it was 70 in here. It's been keeping this place nice and warm. This shelving unit is one of the most important pieces in this entire 
entire shed. It has all of the camera equipment that I use every single day. I got the unit itself from Amazon and I went to Lowe's and I bought one by three quarter inch thick pieces of plywood and I just laid them down as a base so I could actually put things down without them falling through the cracks. This desk is really cool. I got it from a company called FlexiSpot as a part of their collaboration. So they actually gave it to me for free. It is a height adjustable desk that's strong enough to hold my body weight. Now this is not a promotion at all, but I think it is actually a really nice desk. So I'm gonna promote it a little bit. I also attached a overhead camera so I can get some cool shots of unboxing. I don't really do work on this desk, even though it'd probably be better for me to do work on this desk since it can sit and stand. It's like a workshop. Desk. Like a work desk, a workshop desk. Is that a thing? It is now. All right, tour is done. And the question you guys are probably thinking is how much did this entire process actually cost? Now the electrical work was around $750 to get the four outlets and the electricity to be routed into the shed. The actual renovation job that my handyman did was around 4,500, I think, to get it all completed. All the miscellaneous stuff you see inside of here, the couch, the lights, the TVs, and all that stuff, that all comes to about $2,000. If I included the price of the two desks in here, it would cost more like 3,000, but since those were gifts, I didn't include them in the final price, which means we have a grand total of $7,250 for the price of this entire build. Now to compare that to something similar, if I was to rent out a space like this, two times the size, it would cost me about $1,500 a month. In one year, that'd be $18,000, which means I'm saving $10,750. Every single year, I would live in this property rather than living somewhere else. Now the price of that is a little skewed because I do help my parents pay for the heating in this place since it takes so much energy just to have these heaters running all the time. Like I said, the space is 100% worth it in my opinion, but there are things that I think are pretty annoying still. Like I said, the heating bill is pretty high. Floors are pretty cold since it's a shed and it's like over the ground. So cold air goes right through and gets right to my feet. That sucks. The internet was a pretty annoying problem. I'm in a shed. I can't route the ethernet or I didn't route the ethernet canable. Canable. I didn't route the ethernet cable through the electrical wiring. So I had to get this like point to point system that connects the outdoor router to another receiver inside. It's just kind of a process. But the thing is, I don't plan on being in here for a very long time. In fact, I'm not even trying to be in here until the end of the year. So if I can bear with those problems from right now, I'm sure I'll be able to resolve them when I move into a more legitimate place after all this YouTube stuff hopefully blows up. And the only way it can is if you guys like and subscribe to the video if you like this type of content. Now, if you guys want to do a similar thing, I would say go with a handyman go with a local person there's apps that you can use like next door facebook marketplace or craigslist to find people who are around the town who are able to do some sort of job like this it's honestly not a very complicated process the electricity might be a more complicated piece but again it was only four outlets in here not too complicated and for the rest of the build all it is is really putting in insulation adding drywall painting over everything really not as hard as you might think it was so that's really it guys i hope you appreciated my tour of my shed my home office i'm going to do a lot more more of this stuff coming up with other houses and airbnbs make sure you subscribe to me and like the video i appreciate it so much and i'll see you guys in the next one